dear friends i am dr santosh desai and i welcome you all to my youtube channel today i am going to discuss how to find particular integral when capital x is equal to e raise to ax into v where v is some function of x so let us consider first procedure to find the particular integral so as we know that the particular integral of f of d of y is equal to x is pi is equal to 1 upon f of d into x but here x is equal to e raise to ax into v so therefore we get pi is equal to 1 upon f of d e raise to ax into v so this is our regular formula to find out the particular integral of the given function so now the procedure is very simple first we have to write e raise to ax to the left of 1 upon f of d so that is so first we write e raise to ax to the left of 1 upon f of d and then we replace d by d plus a everywhere in the denominator so we get 1 upon f of d plus a operated on v so this is the procedure to find the particular integral when capital x is equal to e raise to ax into v so the procedure is first we write e raise to ax to the left of 1 upon f of d and replace d by d plus a everywhere in the denominator and the method then reduces to to the previous methods that is either it reduces to e raise to ax or it reduces to x raise to m and it is depends on the function capital v so let us consider one note if capital x is equal to e raise to minus ax into v then we have to replace d by d minus a everywhere in the denominator now with this procedure let us we proceed for examples so let us consider the first one solve d square minus 4d plus 3 into y is equal to e raise to x into cos 2x so let us take the given equation it is d square minus 4d plus 3 into y is equal to e raise to x into cos 2x now from this the auxiliary equation is m square minus 4m plus 3 is equal to 0 now this is quadratic equation so solving this we get m is equal to 4 plus minus square root of 16 minus 4 into 1 into 3 divided by 2 now if you simplify the square root we will we will get this is equal to 4 and square root of 4 is 2 so therefore we get m is equal to 4 plus minus 2 divided by 2 now simplifying this we get roots as 1 and 3 and but we know that if m1 m2 m3 are the real and distinct roots of the auxiliary equation then the complementary function is cf is equal to c1 e raise to m1x plus c2 e raise to m2x plus c3 e raise to m3x so using this rule the complementary function is cf is equal to c1 e raise to x plus c2 e raise to 3x now we proceed for particular integral corresponding to e raise to x into cos 2x so we know that pi is equal to 1 upon d square minus 4d plus 3 into e raise to x into cos 2x. Now here we observe that the function is a product of exponential and trigonometric function. So whenever there is a product of two or more functions and one of them is exponential function then we apply the case e raise to ax into v. So the procedure is first you have to take that exponential term to the left of 1 upon t square minus 4d plus 3. So just we write 
it to the left of 1 upon d square minus 4d plus 3 first and replace d by d plus 1 everywhere in the denominator. So we get 1 upon d plus 1 bracket square minus 4 into d plus 1 plus 3 into cos 2x. Now simplifying denominator we get e raised to x into 1 upon d square plus 2d plus 1 minus 4d minus 4 plus 3 into cos 2x. Simplifying denominator we get. So this is e raised to x into 1 upon d square minus 2d into cos 2x. Now we know the method to find particular integral for cos 2x. So the procedure is we have to replace d square by minus a square. So here the value of a is 2. So therefore we have to replace d square by minus 4. So therefore we get e raised to x into 1 upon minus 4 minus 2d into cos 2x. Now for the simplicity one can take minus 2 common from the denominator. So we get e raised to x divided by minus 2 into 1 upon 2 plus t into cos 2x. Now by the method of rationalization one can bring denominator one can bring d square at the denominator. So to apply the method of rationalization just multiply numerator and denominator by 2 minus d. So this is equal to minus e raised to x divided by 2 1 upon 2 plus d into 2 minus d divided by 2 minus d into cos 2x. Now there is no change in the numerator but denominator will take the form 4 minus d square. So therefore minus e raised to x divided by 2 numerator is 2 minus t and denominator is 4 minus d square into cos 2x. Now here one can observe that at denominator again there is a term of t square. So therefore we substitute again d square is equal to minus 4. So this is equal to minus e raised to x divided by 2, 2 minus d divided by 4 minus minus 4 into cos 2x. So simplifying denominator we get 8 and multiply it by 2. So we get minus 1 by 16 e raised to x into 2 cos 2x minus d cos 2x. Now here the meaning of d cos 2x is nothing but the derivative of cos 2x and it is minus 2 times sin 2x. So therefore we get minus 1 upon 16 e raised to x 2 cos 2x plus 2 sin 2x. Now taking 2 common and cancelling with 16 we get minus 1 by 8 e raised to x into cos 2x plus sin 2x. So this is the final value that is final particular integral of the given function and therefore the complete solution is y is equal to c1 e raised to x plus c2 e raised to 3x and then write the pi it is minus 1 by 8 e raised to x into cos 2x plus sin 2x. Now let us consider the next example. Solve d square minus 2d plus 2 into y is equal to x square e raised to 3x. So for solution let us take the given equation and from this given equation the auxiliary equation is m square minus 2m plus 2 is equal to 0. Again this is quadratic equation so we get m is equal to 2 plus minus square root of 4 minus 4 into 1 into 2 divided by 2. Now simplifying square root we get minus 4 and square root of minus 4 is 2i. So therefore m is equal to 2 plus minus 2i divided by 2 and this gives 1 plus minus i. Now we know that if m1 is equal to alpha plus i beta and m2 is equal to alpha minus i beta are the roots of auxiliary equation then the complementary function is 
cf is equal to e raised to alpha x into c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x. Now if you compare alpha plus i beta and alpha minus i beta with 1 plus minus i, we get alpha is equal to 1 and beta is equal to 1. So putting these values in this formula, we get the complementary function as cf is equal to e raised to x into c1 cos x plus c2 sin x. Now after this let us consider the pi corresponding to x square e raised to 3x. So pi is equal to 1 upon d square minus 2d plus 2 into x square e raised to 3x. Again here the product of two functions and one of them is exponential. So we apply the corresponding method. So therefore we first write e raised to 3x to the left of 1 upon d square minus 2d plus 2 and at the same time we replace d by d plus 3 at the denominator everywhere. So therefore we get e raised to 3x into 1 divided by d plus 3 bracket square minus 2 into d plus 3 plus 2 into x square. Now simplify the square root we get e raised to 3x into 1 divided by d square plus 6d plus 9 minus 2d minus 6 plus 2 into x square. Simplify again denominator we get e raised to 3x into 1 divided by d square plus 4d plus 5 into x square. Now here we have to apply the method to find the particular integral when capital X is equal to x raised to m. So the procedure is we have to take first lowest degree term with sign common from the denominator. So the lowest degree term is 5, its sign is plus. So therefore we take 5 common from the denominator. So we get e raised to 3x into 1 divided by, since 5 is common, so we get first term will be unity. Now this is a very important one. Since the 5 is taken common, so we write the remaining terms that is d square plus 4d to its denominator write down the number 5 and the middle sign will be sign of the number which is taken common. So it is plus and therefore middle sign is plus into x square. Now after this step, we have to take the term that bracketed term to the numerator. So let us shift this bracketed term to the numerator. We get e raised to 3x into 1 by 5 into 1 plus d square plus 4d upon 5 raised to minus 1 into x square. Now here the function is x square. So therefore we have to expand this expansion till the expansion contains the term of d square because the higher power terms that is d cube d raised to 4 all are 0. So therefore we have to write the expansion till that expansion contains the term of d square. So therefore we use to write the expansion we use one simple trick. So here the power of x is 2. So therefore we write the first three terms of the expansion. So remember that if the power of x is m if the higher power of x is m, then we write m plus 1 terms of the expansion. So here the power of x is 2. So therefore we write first 3 terms of the expansion. Now we know that expansion 1 plus x raised to minus 1 is equal to 1 minus x plus x square minus x cube. So using this expansion, we write first 3 terms only. So this is equal to e raised to 3x into 1 upon 5 into 1 minus d square plus 4d upon 5 plus d square plus 4d upon 5 bracket square minus and so on into x square. Now operated now simplifying the inner brackets we get e raised to 3x into 1 upon 5 into 1 minus 1 by 5 into d square plus 4d plus 1 upon 25 
into d raised to 4 plus 8 d cube plus 16 d square plus and so on into x square. Now operate each term on x square. So we get e raised to 3x into 1 upon 5 into x square minus 1 upon 5 into d square x square plus 4 d x square plus 1 upon 25 into d raised to 4 x square plus 8 d cube x square plus 16 d square x square. Now just we put the corresponding values that is the value of d into x square that is derivative of x square that is 2x d square x square stands for the 2 times derivative of x square that is 2 and d cube x square it is a 3 times derivative of x square that will be 0. Similarly d raised to 4 x square it is again 0. So putting all the values we get e raised to 3x into 1 upon 5 into x square minus 1 by 5 into 2 plus 8x plus 1 upon 25 into 0 plus 0 plus 32. Now simplifying this we get e raised to 3x into 1 upon 5 x square minus 2 by 5 minus 8x by 5 plus 32 divided by 25. Now simplifying constant terms we get e raised to 3x divided by 5 into x square minus 8x by 5 plus 22 divided by 25. So this is the particular integral corresponding to x square e raised to 3x. Now we have cf and pi and therefore the complete solution is y is equal to c e raised to x into c1 cos x plus c2 sin x plus e raised to 3x divided by 5 into x square minus 8x upon 5 plus 22 divided by 25. Now let us consider last example. Solve d square minus 4d plus 4 y is equal to 8 x square e raised to 2x into sin 2x. So let us take the given equation and from this given equation the auxiliary equation is given by it is m square minus 4m plus 4 is equal to 0. Now this implies m is equal to 4 plus minus square root of 16 minus 4 into 1 into 4 divided by 2. Now simplifying square root we get 0 so therefore m is equal to 4 plus minus 0 divided by 2. Simplifying this again we get 2 2. So here the roots are repeated and therefore the complementary function is given by cf is equal to c1 plus c2x into e raised to 2x. Now consider pi corresponding to 8x square e raised to 2x into sin 2x. As we know that pi is equal to 1 upon d square minus 4d plus 4 into 8x square e raised to 2x into sin 2x. Now here three functions are multiplied that is x square e raised to 2x and sin 2x are multiplied together and one of them is exponential function so therefore one can use the rule e raised to ax into v. So first we shift e raised to 2x to the left of 1 upon d square minus 4d plus 4 and replace d by d plus 2 everywhere in the denominator. So therefore we get 8 e raised to 2x into 1 upon d plus 2 bracket square minus 4 into d plus 2 plus 4 into x square sin 2x. Now simplifying denominator we get 8 e raised to 2x into 1 upon d square plus 4d plus 4 minus 4d minus 8 plus 4 into x square sin 2x. Simplifying again we get 8 e raised to 2x 1 upon d square into x square sin 2x. As we know that d is the derivative and d and 1 upon d are inverse operators of each other. So therefore 1 upon d stands for integration. Now here the term is 1 upon d square. So that means that x 
you have to take 2 times integration of x square sin 2x. So let us take integration of x square sin 2x. So first we take one integration. So 8 e raised to 2x 1 upon d integration of x square sin 2x into dx. Now to integrate this, I'm going to use uv rule. So let us recall that generalized uv rule. So this uv rule is applicable to find the or to integrate the product of two functions. So let us here consider a particular case. Suppose one function say u is power of x where the powers are positive integers and if suppose primes or dashes denotes the derivatives and suffixes denotes the integration then the integration of uv is equal to. So while finding this integration of uv you remember that our function u is power of x and the powers are positive integers. So out of these two functions let us write the function u as it is first and take the integration of v and let it denote it by v1. Now we have the two functions u and v1. So again here remember that alternative positive negative signs. Next sign is negative. Now we have the two functions u and v1. So let us write derivative of u denoted by u dash and take integration of v1 denoted by v2. Next sign is plus. Again we have two functions u dash and v2. Take the derivative of u dash so it is denoted by u double dash and integration of v2 we denote it by v3. So next sign is minus again take the derivative of u double dash denote it by u triple dash and integration of v3 denote it by v4 and continue this way and definitely after finite steps this process will end because the power of u is positive integer and we are taking the derivative of that functions. So definitely after finite steps you will get the 0. So let us apply the same method to find the integration of x square sin 2x dx. So here in the integrand let us take u is equal to x square and v is equal to sin 2x and apply this rule. So first I write x square as it is and integration of sin 2x. So it is minus cos 2x divided by 2. Now I have the two functions x square and minus cos 2x divided by 2. So next sign is minus. So take the derivative of first bracket it is 2x and integration of second bracket it is minus sin 2x divided by 4. Next sign is plus derivative of 2x it is 2 and integration of minus sin 2x divided by 4 is cos 2x divided by 8. Now if you write the next term then you have to take the derivative of 2 and obviously it is 0 so therefore remaining parts are 0 and here this completes the integration. So let us simplify all the brackets and then we get 8 e raised to 2x into 1 upon t into minus x square cos 2x divided by 2 plus x sin 2x divided by 2 plus cos 2x divided by 4. Now 1 upon d again stands for integration. So let us take integration of this whole bracket with respect to x. Now I am going to apply the same rule again. So here for the first term I will take u is equal to minus x square divided by 2 and v is equal to cos 2x. So let us apply the uv rule for the first term with u is equal to minus x square by 2 and v is equal to cos 2x. So we get 8 e raised to 2x into the value of u is that is minus x square by 2 you have to write first as it is and the value of v is cos 2x and its integration is sin 2x divided by 2. Next sign is minus derivative of minus x square by 2 it is minus 2x divided by 2 and integration of sin 2x divided by 2 is minus cos 2x divided by 4. Next is next sign is plus then if you simplify minus 2x upon 2 it is minus x and its derivative is minus 1 
and integration of minus cos 2x divided by 4 is minus sin 2x divided by 8. So this completes the integration of first term. Now for the middle term, let us take u is equal to x by 2 and v is equal to sin 2x and applying uv rule we get so first write u is equal to x by 2 as it is integration of sin 2x it is minus cos 2x divided by 2 then next sign is minus derivative of x by 2 is 1 by 2 and integration of minus cos 2x divided by 2 it is minus sin 2x divided by 4 so this also completes the integration of the middle part now finally the integration of cos 2x upon 4 is sin 2x divided by 8 and this completes the integration. Now just I remove all the inner brackets and simplifying the terms we get 8 e raised to 2x into minus x square sin 2x divided by 4 then next sign is minus then we get x cos 2x divided by 4 plus sin 2x by 8 minus x cos 2x divided by 4 next term is sin 2x divided by 8 and finally sin 2x divided by 8 now just multiply this bracket by 8 and simplifying the terms again we get so if i multiply first term by 8 so i get e raised to 2x is e into minus 2x square sin 2x now if you check for second term and fourth term both are same so multiply these two terms by 8 and simplifying we get minus 4x into cos 2x and finally sin 2x by 8 there are three terms so it is 3 sin 2x divided by 8 multiply it by 8 we get 3 sin 2x so this is the particular integral of the given function and therefore the complete solution is y is equal to c1 plus c2 x e raised to 2 x plus e raised to 2 x into minus 2 x square sin 2 x minus 4 x cos 2 x plus 3 sin 2 x. So this is the required solution of the given equation. So once again remember the procedure when the RHS is product of two or more functions and one of them is exponential function then the particular integral is to obtain the particular integral first we write e raised to ax to the left of 1 upon f of d and replace d by d plus a everywhere in the denominator. So the simple procedure is there. Now in the next video we will discuss rules to find particular integral when capital X is equal to X raised to M into V where V is some function of X and M is positive integer. For more videos, please subscribe my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.